question. Uh, Alistair, did the fight go the way you thought it would go? Uh, funny thing, I, uh, I predicted it the evening before to my fiance. So she's not here right now, otherwise she would confirm that. But I said, first I'm going to do this, then I'm going to do that, and I'm going to finish it with a liver kick. And, uh, yeah, I don't know if, if it's luck or it's strategy. But it uh, turned away, uh, turned out that way, and I'm just happy that, uh, that it did. I know it was your first fight in the UFC. What did you make of the experience being in the UFC? What are your thoughts on fighting Junior Dos Santos? Well, I'm very excited to, to be fighting for the title. It's, uh, it's my goal, and, and it's the, at this point the highest achievable for every, uh, every, every martial artist in the world, the UFC title. Um, my experience with UFC, well, it's big, it's huge. I think it's like 100 times bigger than Strikeforce. It's, 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 K1 is big, but it's even a lot bigger than K1. So I was um, yeah, a little bit blown away, still am, with all the fans. And, and, and when you walk in there, it's, it's just crazy. But uh, I love it, every second of it. This is for uh, Alistair. Um, were you surprised that he was more aggressive with his wrestling since that's you know, pretty much was his big issue? When they were shot at beating you, well, um, he haven't fought in a long time, so I think he, he had, in the meantime, he upgraded his game. And uh, that is what every fighter should do. You, should, yeah, you need to upgrade your game. And he was getting a little bit unpredictable, only going for the, for the takedown. So he upgraded his game. I was, I was, like I said, ready for whatever he was going to throw at me. Uh, if he was going to throw strikes, I would be ready for it. If he would come for the takedown, I would be ready for it. Alistair, do you think, sorry, over here to your left, do you think that, uh, what's up? do you think that you answered the questions of all your critics who <coughs> may have said that you weren't facing top competition outside the UFC tonight? Are you satisfied with answering those questions? I'm satisfied. I'm pretty satisfied. I noticed Colin Lamb has no bruises on him. Are you, did you, did you forgive him for messing up all of those, all, all of those tests that, that, well, a lot of drama, pre-fight drama you had to go through? Uh, I think, you know, Colin has done a great job for me uh, and the rest of the team, by the way. They, they're, they're really, I had a lot of setbacks in the last uh, last three, four months, a lot of setbacks. But uh, the team uh, came together greatly and, um, you know, I can forgive him that little, little slip up because he, he, he supported me in other ways greatly. Alistair, right over here. Um, did you have any... UFC uh, octagon jitters. Um, everybody kind of always talks about that. Like their first fight, <coughs> usually whenever whenever they first fight in the UFC. No, I can only say I was very uh, motivated. I just wanted to get in here and show everybody. And I mean, everybody was watching the whole world. I got emails, messages, Facebooks, Twitters from all over the world, and uh, I just wanted to show the world that I'm ready and that I'm coming. Also, did you tend to respect uh, Brock size? A little bit more, just you know, cause he, he's, he's such a big guy and kind of his wrestling. And is that kind of going to be the same game plan against uh, Junior Dos Santos? <clears throat> well, Junior Dos Santos is a very different fighter, so the game plan will be different. Uh, but both are very aggressive, and um, yeah, you know, the thing is, I just like to be aggressive. I just like to be dominant. I don't like to be going backwards, waiting. Sometimes you have to, but uh, I prefer just to go in there and uh, beat the other opponent up. Alistair, over here on your left. Uh, it, when you were in the first round, did you get the sense at all that Brock was timid uh, when, when dealing with any of your strikes? After one, I mean, yes. Right. I was just going to ask Kara that you left your former training camp with Golden Glory and then you went to Extreme to Couture uh, to prepare for this fight. Um, when you go to prepare for the Junior Dos Santos fight, where do you have in mind to maybe start training or set up camp? Uh, that is uh, undetermined, yeah. Alistair, uh, obviously you finished him with kind of the liver kick, like you said you predicted, but uh, I think you just mentioned, you said you could feel him not react well to, uh, to, to your knees the first time you threw onto his body. Uh, can you just talk about how, how could you tell he wasn't uh, responding well? Because uh, after that he didn't 
come for the takedown, as he would. After that, we would come in the clinch and he would disengage. And usually Brock is a guy that just comes straight through you forward, but he was not doing that. So um, then I knew I didn't need bother. Also wanted to ask you, uh, leading up to this fight, you said you were a, a big Brock fan. You always got up and watched his fights. Uh, obviously, afterwards, he announced his retirement. Uh, I saw you say something to him. But what would you say to him, and what are your thoughts on, on him walking away from uh, MMA? Well, my thoughts on him walking away, I think he shouldn't walk away. Because um, love him or hating, but it's always something with Brock's fighting, like Dana said. And uh, I, uh, he's a guy who goes for it. I think he... he Achieved a lot in a short uh, span, and, and yeah, it should be a shame if he stops now. And I think there's still more to gain from. When you said earlier that you told your fiance that, was there something that you saw on tape that you know you felt like you you know could take advantage of when you made the comment about you know you called the called your shots, so to speak? It just came up to me. It's weird, I know. Uh, I'm not usually the guy who believes in uh, aliens and UFOs, but uh, superstitious stuff. But I just say. Tomorrow I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. The first thing being a liver kick, and uh, just turn out the. <coughs> in, in your career, you've landed a lot of great shots, great punches, and kicks and whatnot. But that particular kick, you know, did, was that like kind of the home run of all the shots you've landed? Because it seemed like it was the perfect shot, at the perfect place, at the perfect time. I just wondered if you know that particular one might have been your best that you had. I've had a couple of other nice shots. Which one? What compares to that? Well, and in in other leagues, like in the K1, when I when I beat Badahari, he was the K1 champion. I was uh, coming from mixed arts, and nobody expected me to beat him, and I knocked him out with a beautiful left hook. First, I knocked him down with a left knee and a left hook. Nobody expected that, so that was uh, one of my moments. Uh, what else? We're talking about shots, right? I had a really nice um, um, liver kick, the same one actually on Saki. Um, what else? On Strike Force, I had a really nice one and against Brett Rogers. Submissions, Vitor Belfort, the first time I beat him. So I've had my, I've had my nice strikes. That was Um Were you surprised how easy uh, you were able to defend off his takedown attempt? I think he tried twice. Like I said, I, I get my confidence from training. Training was, uh, despite all the distractions, uh, going good. Guys uh, couldn't take me down, so I felt good. I felt confident. Even though Brock is, is still a very big, strong guy, I felt like, no, I'm just going to beat him up. It appears as though you weren't too afraid of the stand-up game. How long did it take for you guys into the fight where you realized that you, you had a, a real superior advantage? Well, the thing is, uh, Brock, Brock actually cut me with his first jab. So that was a little bit, uh, I had blood coming in my eye, I couldn't see in my right eye. So I had to adjust a little bit, but um, that also made me put more pressure, because I didn't know how severe the cut was, I didn't know maybe there's going to be uh, you know, medical, uh, medical intervention. So then I knew I need to finish this uh, fight before we get there, and that's made me step my game up. And there was a report that came out earlier today that the Nevada State Athletic Commission was going to hold your purse uh, because of the situation with Golden Glory. I was wondering if you could touch on that. I didn't know about that. You're just finding out right now? Yep. Do you have any comments on that? Um, no, no comments. It seemed like when people were talking about this fight, a lot of people thought that if you could stuff his, his early shots, <coughs> that he would get frazzled. And, uh, and really sort of, you know, that would be your opening to, to do what you wanted. Was that your take on the fight as well? If you could stop his early onslaught, that it would be your fight to lose? Well, the thing is, I, I didn't know what he was going to do. You know, usually Brock always comes in full force and he rushes. But you always, you know, like, like I didn't watch any tapes of him prior to the fight because I didn't want to have my mindset that he's going to come like a bull. And he didn't, so... And, and just looking ahead to the uh, Dos Santos fight, uh, obviously you said you had stitches, but overall, I mean, in a perfect world, when would you like this fight to happen? Well, first I'd like to have a nice long holiday and um, arrange some stuff, get my stuff in order, because there's still some work to do. And I don't know, maybe uh, before the summer or in the summer, 2012. And finally, uh, you, you've said before that he's one of, if not the best boxers 
in the, in the heavyweight division. Obviously, you pride yourself on your striking and, and your kickboxing background. Is this a dream matchup for you to go against the guy who you consider to be the best, best boxer, and then you can thus prove once and for all that you are the best heavyweight striker in the world? I think for everybody. I think everybody is excited for this fight. And so am I. Congrats. Uh, Alistair is right here. Do you think that there's something <coughs> special about um, Dutch fighters and Dutch preparation for fighting that, that maybe we don't see enough of in the UFC right now and that you can especially bring to it? Well, I think uh, I'm kind of unique because there's not a lot of, uh, there's not like uh, 20 Alistair's working around in Holland. Um, but what Holland is known for is, uh, is the kickboxing, the, st the striking, the stand-up. Um, but then still, in Holland we don't have the wrestling. But fortunate enough, I was uh, very young when I started to do both. I was 15 when my brother took me to the gym. And uh, I didn't like it at all because I got beat up. I was small, weak, no technique. But uh, yeah, I just hung in there and kept doing it. And now we're 16 years later and now I can do both. Yeah, I was curious if you introduced your brother to the guys at the UFC. Valentin. Yeah, he's not here. We know him. I know, that's what I'm asking. If they've had him yet in the... No, but usually, usually people in Holland, they don't do both. They're only kickboxing. And then there's a small group that does wrestling. But I was lucky enough to, uh, to start both. And um, thanks to my brother, he took me. And uh, I just basically went up in his footsteps because he was training both and fighting already in Rings Japan. And that was what I wanted. That was my dream. So I just kept on doing both. Alistair, um, as far as the, I mean, I know you don't want to talk about the legal thing itself, but as far as that all coming down, like in the last week when you were, you know, in your final days right before the fight, did it bother you at all, or did you just shut it out because you knew you couldn't be distracted? Uh, I don't know. I, like I said, I have a wonderful team that um, that supports me and that has supported me greatly through these through these times, and that just kept me keep the focus on, on what was important. And uh, that was just focus on just relaxing, keeping the mind on the fight, and not think about uh, these uh, these things. Thank you guys very much. Have a good night.